singing some really off-the-wall rock and roll songs. Tonight on PM Magazine, we'll go with Beth Wood to Iowa and meet a guy who's become known as Weird Al Yankovic. He's the weirdest rock and roller ever. The rock group Queen's number one hit song, Another One Bites the Dust. Superstar Billy Joel's It's Still Rock and Roll to Me. Roll to me. It's still Billy Joel to me. And the next, My Sharona. All three songs were at the top of the pop charts, and all three fell victim to rock and roll parody writer and singer Weird Al Yankovic. No heavy metal, just a mean lead accordion. Weird Al's gained popularity, or perhaps notoriety, because of his hilarious rock and roll rip-offs, and of course, because of his weirdness. Do you think people need a kind of craziness? I think so. I think we live in times when you when you need that kind of humor, because there, there isn't a lot of musical humor around that anymore. Uh, Alan Sherman's gone, and uh, I'm hoping to fill that void that I think uh, we need right now. Off stage, Al seems pretty normal. He lives in Los Angeles and works during the week in the mailroom of a radio syndication company called Westwood One. And just like many other 21-year-old guys, he recently graduated from college with a degree in architecture. But being Weird Al in his free time fulfills a fantasy that started when he was young. When did you start the accordion? Oh, uh, when I was seven years old, I think I began taking lessons. I had lessons for three years. And after that, I got tired of it. And I sat it down because I was just learning polkas and, you know, mazurkas and whatever. And uh, that really wasn't what I was into. I wanted to play rock music like the rest of my friends. And with an accordion, that wasn't really that acceptable. I, you know, I might get a job in a bar mitzvah or playing Italian weddings, but, uh, you know, not, not in the rock band like I wanted. So just within the last couple of years, I realized, well, I could, I could work something. I mean, if I'm a little weird, maybe if I do something a little strange, and then the accordion would be an acceptable one meeting for that. So it seems to have worked out so far. His biggest hit has been Another One Rides the Bus, but Weird Al first received national exposure on the syndicated radio comedy show, Dr. Demento. Right yeah. This started in my bedroom with a little cassette tape recorder, and uh, several years ago I sent one of those tapes uh, to Dr. Demento, who happens to be a friend of mine from Los Angeles, who, uh, who has one of those syndicated shows that plays a series of uh, old and new comedy and novelty tunes. And uh, way back when I was in high school, he started playing my original tunes on the air. And uh, this continued for a few years. And then uh, in 1979, I recorded a parody of the Knacks, My Sharona, called My Bologna. And that was a pretty large success on the show. And uh, it was eventually released on Capitol Records as a single. And how do rock stars react to Al's versions of their songs? I know a lot of artists are afraid to say, oh, it stings, because that makes them, you know, come off sounding pretty bad. But I think most of them generally are flattered with it. They, they have a pretty good sense of things about those things, luckily. Where do you get the crazy ideas for your songs? They just come to you, or does it take a while? No, it, well, again, it varies from song to song. Usually just an idea strikes me, and I sit down and write the song, and it's, what can I say, it's just a product of a sick mind. <laughs> Weird or whatever, people love his songs. His latest hit, Another One Rides the Bus, has been requested at radio stations all over the country. And we got it one Saturday afternoon, immediately threw it on the platter. And uh, it worked. I had like 50 calls immediately, you know, all through the afternoon. Hello, KRNA. Another one rides the bus? Sure, okay. Thank you. The, the phone calls are going bananas for this guy. He has made the accordion probably one of the greatest rock instruments in, in modern day music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, the sick man himself, today's step of the day, Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> 
the parents in Iowa City, fans had a chance to ride the bus with Weird Al. Riding the bus down the bottom of the bar, and the place was pretty packed. I couldn't find a seat, so I had to stand with a pervert in the back. It was really like a locker room, there were guns all over the floor. We're already packed in like sardines, or stop in the cigar room. What would make a person spend money to see Weird Al Yankovic? Everybody, everybody says someone's different. He is totally different. Totally different. He's weird and I like him because he's cool. I don't know how much money they pay him, but it better be a lot because I wouldn't do the things he does for that. He's weird. Yeah. I mean, those pants he wore were so psychedelic. I was just going out of my mind. Weird Al, he's the greatest. He's the best. I can't get enough, can't get enough of him. He's, he's wonderful. I love him. <laughs> But does Weird Al's music really have any social significance? My music shows man's inhumanity against man, and uh, in the correlation of human invention, you know, a strange juxtaposition sometimes occurs, and the visual tension that erupts when this kind of tension occurs, is, it creates a to total void which the medium can't comprehend, and the, the ramifications are totally indiversified. And <laughs> maybe? No. Weird Al's manager tells us that another truly weird record is in the works. It will include such parodies as Another One Rides the Bus and some other original songs. Stay with us now because Mike and I will return with a look at next week's PM Magazine.